In this video, I want to show you how to identify the local maximum and minimums of a function by using its graph. So you may have heard those terms before, maximum and minimum, and maybe even have a really good idea as to what they mean. Most people say, well, the maximum is the absolute highest place on the entire graph, and the minimum is the absolute lowest place on the graph. And if I just said max and min, you would be correct. Sometimes, however, we want something a little bit weaker, known as the local max and mins. And you might be saying, wait, local, what, what's the difference between the two? Well, in a local max or a local min, it doesn't necessarily have to be the absolute highest or the absolute lowest. Just as long as it's the highest point on a small interval, it's good enough to be called a local max. And as long as it's the lowest point on a small interval, you can call it a local minimum. Let's get a graph and, and let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I wanted to mark out the absolute highest point on this graph, it's really hard to do because this arrow indicates that this thing actually keeps going on and on forever. In fact, it doesn't have an absolute highest point, it just keeps getting bigger. However, what if I just wanted to look at this section of the graph? If I only looked at that particular section, then this point right here would be the highest of that section. So I can call that a local maximum. Now you can see with, with this type of definition that I might actually have more than one local max. It all depends on what interval I'm looking at. So if I look at this small interval over here, then I have another local max. Now with that idea in mind, you can also look at low points in the graph. And again, think about some small interval and if you have some point that is the smallest of that interval, well, then you have your local minimum. And depending on the graph or function, you may have a few of these. So here's an example of a graph that has two local max, two local min, even though it really does increase forever and ever, and it keeps decreasing forever. Now, to describe where these places happen, you basically describe the point at where it occurs. Let's do this with the following example. So, I want to find all the local maximums and all the local minimums. Let's start with our local max. So, here I can see I have a high point maybe on this small interval between, say, 4 and 7. So, local max. Looks like I have one at 5, 7. And that is my only local maximum. Now you may, may be wondering, well, what about this corner here? Is it a local max? And the answer is actually no. If I try and look at an interval, say, between negative 6 and negative 4, this point is not the, the highest point in there. There's lots of other points that are equally as high. So it must be the, app, you know, the highest of that interval. Let's go ahead and grab our local minimums. So it looks like I have a nice interval down here and a local minimum at negative 6, negative 7. Again, don't worry about spots like this because when you try and cut down your interval, there's lots of other points that are exactly the same height. So it has to be the lowest of that interval. All right, looks like that's all of our max and min for this graph. Let's look at one more. Okay, this one's a bit more curvy. Let's see if we can find our high and low points. So I have one here, another high point here. So local maximums. Looks like we have one at negative five, three. And another one at four, negative two. Okay, local minimums, looks like here's one, uh, one negative six, like the other one is here at five, negative three. And just like that you have all of your local maximums and minimums. 